All right, man, Torture Talk, 6 o'clock show, 6 o'clock show. You know what it is, man. We in here, man. We in here. I'm trying to find a thing. All right, man. We back. We back. We back. We back. King of the North shit. Look, man. So today's episode, we're going to be talking about <clears throat> Kendrick Lamar. The paradoxical Kendrick Lamar, the polarizing figure Kendrick Lamar. Is Kendrick Lamar really who he say he is or is he a fake? You know what I'm saying? Is he a fake? Is he a fake activist? And all this good stuff. So look, before I get into that, I got to get my legendary spill. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing if you're new here. Let me work on your subscription today. All the beautiful, single, sexy ladies put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones at. Just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, links is in the description. Cash app. They call me the Hidden Gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 13,000 subscribers. And uh, the King of the North, let me know what kingdom you from. Also, too, I'm giving a giveaway. I'm, give, I'm doing, I'm blah, 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 blah. I am doing a giveaway on Friday, this Friday. So whoever has the best comment, put your cash app at the bottom of the comment. If you have cash app, only cash app, no, no other stuff. And, um, yeah, and I'm going to whoever's the best comment. I'm going to bless you on Friday. I mean, wake up, we read it, leave some comments, and then that's it. So, look, we're going to get into this video. Uh, this is pretty interesting. So, let's get it. Be back to discuss. All right, so let's get it, man. You know what it is. <laughs> Everybody thinks Kendrick Lamar is a great person. But below his surface lies a monster controlled by ego and vanity. This man is quick to place judgment on anyone he considers morally inferior or corrupt whenever he sees fit. And while some think this is a sign of virtue, many others claim it's nothing more than a self-serving strategy to acquire status and power, leaving us with one simple question. What does Kendrick really want? Psst. There was a time when no one dared to call Kendrick's integrity into question. But along the way, something changed. Ever since an early age, he felt the need to be heard all around the world. But there was a problem. Coming up in the music industry is really difficult because you're often required to water down and become someone you're not in order to really move units. Kendrick Lamar has been fighting that notion his whole career. See, usually I mean, I could kind of agree with that part of coming up in the music industry basically you don't know you have to basically be this facade or some people have to portray to be this character that you don't really know if that's the real person or not um i'm gonna give my analysis on what i believe kendrick is going through and i think it's very difficult for him because he is looked at as a he is looked at as like a godlike figure to some people and uh, and for good reason, though. I know a lot of y'all might say, oh, what you mean for good reason? Nobody should be looked at as a god. He's looked at as a god-like figure because he has helped a lot of people do certain things. And whether people want to say he's a fake activist, whether you want to say he's a real activist, ultimately his goal, his heart is in the right place. So let's keep it going. Conscious and lyrical rappers like him remain underground to make room for those willing to compromise and turn themselves into a commodity in order to reach a wider audience. See, but Kendrick, he's different. And at the start of the 2010s, he just asked himself, wait, what if I do both? Let me make a woke concept album that's loaded with radio and club hits. And get this, they would all be perfectly woven into the project's flow and narrative. Now, people just told him, Kendrick, <laughs> you live in a fantasy land. This cannot be done. Wrong. It can be done, and he did it several times. This way, his positive message could reach everybody, even those who didn't want to listen. That was Kendrick's strategy of fighting the evil ways of the music industry and staying true to himself. Well, I mean, that's a great analysis of it, but at the same time, you have to also have to look at the other side of it. Because I get what he's saying. But you also got to look at that's kind of like how rappers used to do when they used to make commercial songs. And then when people hear their album, it's it's actually hard. It's it's the real in effect. 
that's how it goes. Like rappers do that all the time. This is nothing new. Maybe you're saying it's new for, for or from Kendrick's standpoint of him doing what he do. But rappers used to do that. Eminem was good for doing that. A lot of rappers did that. They'll make what they call a radio hit or radio friendly song. That'd get people to go buy the album. And then when they hear the album, ha, nigga, gotcha. It's nothing like a radio song. Biggie did that. Everybody does that. So that so I can't really fault Kendrick for doing that, uh, basically, because you kind of got to do that. You got to lure the people in. You can't just give them who you really are outside of that, because a lot of times when you do that, what happens? People don't, they don't want to hear it, or <clears throat> they only want you to do that. So I get it. Or that's what he wants you to think. There's a whole legion of people out there that think all of this. Here's the book I got and look at the design. Oh my God. And it's huge. You understand? Yeah. And that homie, his collection of a Drake instrumental and America Day, and both of which were a diss towards Drake in some way. Whether we're talking about the hillbillies where the beat was like a direct interpolation of a Drake instrumental and America has a problem where looking back the disses were even less subtle. Truthfully, I be lying in my rap song cause I always felt a mission I snap on me. His career didn't come with no life insurance. Now whether these were done strategically to provoke Aubrey or they were just emotionally driven decisions, we don't really know, okay? We would just be speculating at that point. All we do know is that on March 19th, 2024, Kendrick posted this on his personal Instagram. Hey, life gets real tricky. No matter where you at with it, I never pick and choose what stories to relate to. All of them are relative. A good old saying can snap you back into reality sometimes. But in a moment of confusion, the best thing you can do is find a GNX. Makes you realize that the only thing that matters in life is that original paperwork, that TL2 code. One of 547. Yeah, I finally changed. It's over with. Dead homies. My big cousin Pad Dog is smiling down. Anybody want to line it up? I'll pull him off the floor and flip your shit. I'm too Caucasian for this. I'm sorry. Bro, like, I remember seeing this post when it came out and reading the comments saying, like, Come to Atlanta. Heart emoji. When is the album dropping? Bro, are you not reading this? This is a changed man at the point of no return. Bro is on some different shit. In order to publicly diss you, I had to fundamentally change as a person. I feel like people either forget or overlook this post, but in the context of everything that went down, I think it holds an incredible amount of importance. If not for the GNX that- And then you talking about people reading into stuff. You definitely just read into that. That was crazy. You talking about everybody else reading into stuff? You clearly read into that. And I understand why you said that because the album is called GNX and you went back and tried to do that. Don't You ain't slick, dog. You ain't slick. I seen exactly what you did. You trying to say, oh, well, I went back and look. Nah, nah, nah. You didn't know that. You didn't know that. Nobody knew that the album was going to be called GNX. Nobody knew that. Don't even try it, bro. Don't even try it. It's mentioned in the post, but also for the mental process that Kendrick put on display here, which was instrumental in him lighting back the feud between him and Drake. This is unquestionably where it all started, okay? He's not even hiding it. Because three days after this post, I'm not even joking, three days, bro. March 22nd, like that drops, and Kendrick fucking lights- started, bro. Oh my God. This is not when the feud started. The feud been started. But if you really want to be technical, this started from first person shooter. This is when this started. First person shooter. Forget everything else. First person shooter was when it started. And because he referenced first person shooter in the record. So it can't be because anything else is because of that. He referenced first person shooter in the record. If it didn't start from first person shooter, then why would he reference first person shooter? I don't get that. The world on fire. Now here's where people get split because Kendrick's contradictions, hypocrisies, and moral inconsistencies would be turned up to an all time high after this point. First and foremost, Kendrick called out Drake for being a deadbeat dad, but apparently had no problem with it when he was using Future to diss Drake for the first time on Like That, right? I mean, Future. Wait, what? <laughs> How you even, like, how do you even connect the two? 
He just because he called him a deadbeat dad, you're saying that. Wait, let me let me let me hear this because this gotta be this gotta be a. Uh, Foremost, Kendrick called out Drake for being a deadbeat dad, but apparently had no problem with it when he was using Future to diss Drake for the first time on Like That, right? I mean, Future's pretty much the face of deadbeat dads. Then I. Right, so let me stop you there. You don't know that. You don't know if Future is the face of deadbeat dads because at least, at least I haven't heard maybe, uh, maybe one baby mother come out and that could just be a disgruntled person. You don't know that. Number two. He only called, he called Drake a deadbeat dad after they started going through the book. Cause he never said nothing about Drake's child in, in Euphoria or 616 in LA. So you totally skipped over those songs and those songs were as a part of the battle. He only called, he only started getting personal with Drake when Drake got, got personal with him. That's what that was. So for you to say that, I don't know. It's kind of like, I don't know if that's what I would call excuse me, what I would call that, but bro, you totally skipped over that. And I get what you're saying about, oh, you ain't had no problem calling Drake deadbeat dad, and then you're a hypocrite because look at Future, he's a deadbeat dad, and you ain't sitting in him about it. What are you supposed to police everybody? <laughs> like, what? When did, yo, I don't get this. I don't get this. When does everybody, like, why does everybody always say that now? If, 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 if somebody hang with somebody, you gotta, you gotta say this about them too. You don't have to say that about Future. And Future didn't even know he was doing that verse. That's the thing. Hate the way you sneak this. If I catch flight, is gonna be direct, bro. Both of these men were sneak dissing each other. It wasn't just a one-sided thing. It was mutual. I got more. So Mr. Morale was pretty anti. So look, all right. That now, when you said I hate the way uh, you sneak this, if I catch flight, is gonna be direct. He was. He wasn't saying that from that point. He was saying from this point on. I'm not, I'm, when I catch flight now, it's going to be direct. And he said that on Euphoria. He didn't say that on, on um, the hour. So again, you're being disingenuous by saying that because he said that after the beef had started. You know what I'm saying? He didn't say that on, on, on before the beef started. He said that after. He said, I right, from now on, if I catch flight, it's going to be direct. You know what I'm saying? I hate the way you be seeing this and you think, no, from now on, when I catch flight, it's going to be direct. That's what he was saying. I cancel culture. You know, Kendrick was trying to prove a point on there, but only to backtrack on all of it and use it as a weapon uh, against Drake, right? Weaponizing all of his pedo allegations. And then on Meet the Grams, he told Drake, I'm the only artist that could offer you some help, you know? Which you I know, think is a- He did not tell Drake that. He said, you dissing me when I was the only artist that can offer you some help. And on top of that, he said in the album before, I mean, the record before that, he said, what'd he say? Um, he told Drake, basically, well, not before that, but before that, he said to Drake, on Euphoria, he was telling Drake that if you, uh, listen, bro, I can, I can help you by saying these certain things, by not saying these certain things, he basically told Drake, if you keep this a friendly fade, then it won't go nowhere. And Drake crossed the line. Drake crossed the line. So I don't understand what you're saying here is if he's using these things against him as a weapon. That's what you're supposed to do in a battle. That's number one. Number two, he warned Drake before this even got to that point. Really disingenuous claim. I don't think at any point in this beef did Kendrick want to help Drake out, okay? I'm pretty confident in the fact that he just wanted to destroy. <laughs> nah, that's not true. Because he said in, one, in another song before all of this happened, he said, I was shocked that you sent a, that feature and you know that we got some shit to address. He basically was saying to Drake, you was being, you supposed to talk before, and I don't know what they need to talk about, but they were supposed to talk before he did a feature with him. This is what he said. He said, I was surprised when you sent that feature request. You know we, you know we got some shit to address. You know we do. Me and you, we got something to talk about. So you're saying that, oh, I know he wouldn't have helped him. You don't know that. You don't know that. You don't know what Kendrick would have did for Drake. You have no clue. 
Maybe there was something that, that Kendrick wanted to talk to him about, and it didn't happen. Who knows? Not help. So yeah, a lot of these moral objections were simply a vehicle for him to win this battle, right? I don't think that's a controversial statement at all. But at the end of the day, it comes down to this. If Kendrick was really a saint, he wouldn't be where he's at today. And he would just fucking lose this battle. Unfortunately, that's how the world is. I, I don't know what to say, bro. You gotta be sort of evil. But in order to get to the bottom of this paradox, we have to question why this battle was even being fought. Was it for Kendrick's own interests or was it for the greater good? That's sort of the question floating around right now. I feel like this duality is something all of us have to tackle day in and day out. Because when I think about my real intentions, I'm like, yeah, all right, I want to do the right thing, but I also want three BBL thotties and a Miami penthouse, respectfully. So I get how someone could look at all of this moral grandstanding and think it's performative and sort of bullshit in the grand scheme of things, that this is a market like any other market and Kendrick just knows how to take advantage of. That's the other side of this argument. It's a dog eats dog world. Shit is the way it is. It's never gonna change. We all want three BBL thotties in a Miami penthouse. I think this line by Drake pretty much explains it. You're a dog and you know it, you just play sweet. Cole was coming at him for this too. You're a fake activist and a hypocrite and the persona you put out there is not real, okay? It's fabric. And all that, all that is just basically subjective. Like, you could, you could say that, they could say that, and if Kendrick does something that is, is, I would say, a little hypocritical or he does something that, then they could easily say, see, I said that. No, that doesn't mean that. Just because they call you a fake activist and you might slip or you might do something that is uh, in their eyes not considered activi activism or whatever you want to call it. You can't say you can't say that because they said that. Like, I hate when people do that. They'll throw a label out there and then 20 years later, something happened. They'll, they'll pull it up like, see, I told you. You're like, well, you said that 20 years ago and, I, and just so happens today after 35 years, I done did something and now I'm a fake activist. Like, get up out of here. I've been an activist all my life. Then they were, oh, you, you're a dog. You just play sweet. Kendrick never said he wasn't a dog. He admitted that. So I don't understand how these arguments against Kendrick when he admits a lot of these things. The fake activist thing, I just don't think, I don't think Kendrick Lamar actually said he was an activist. I don't. At least I never heard him say that. You know what I'm saying? I don't remember him saying that. But he did. I don't know. He could portray to be one, I guess, but I don't know. You're only using this image as a means of getting what you want, right? The problem with that mentality is then you can't really trust anybody who cares about a cause then. I mean, everyone benefits in some way from their activism, whether the benefits are social or financial or both. The only people you can trust at that point are people who are just openly greedy and self-indulgent, who don't really care about any cause. Because there is no hidden agenda there, right? No way that guy is lying. He's just openly a shitty person. And I think we sort of reached the root of the problem here. There's an incredible amount of distrust between these two groups. And I think there's a lot of parallels we can draw to the current political climate in the US, Republicans and Democrats. I don't know why it feels dirty saying, it feels like I shouldn't be saying this, but it's 100% true. Hey, guess which one Drake would be? in this scenario. Truthfully, Kendrick is just like the rest of us. And at the end of the day, I think not even he can distinguish whether what he's doing is completely pure or tainted by ego and self-interest. I think both can be true at the same time. You can do something knowing it's gonna I have- I don't think, I don't think Kendrick Lamar is on some type of ego trip. I don't think, I, I think that, I think what y'all do is y'all put, and, and it's sad to say this, but it's the truth. I think y'all, Y'all put too much faith into Kendrick and Drake and all these artists as if they if they supposed to raise y'all like they're y'all they're your parents or something. I think that y'all don't y'all look y'all try to look into things, read into things that's not there. And for you to say that he he has this ego and two things could be right at the same time, for me, I kinda like, I don't know about that because I look at it like Kendrick Lamar has been telling us who he is for the last 13, 14 years. He's been saying it on his music. He says he's a hypocrite. He says he's a lover. He says he's a fighter. He says he's 
He says he's this. He says he cries. He says that. So I can't say that he's this egotistical person. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he is. Maybe he ain't. I don't know. But I'm saying I don't read too much into all of these things when he says them because he's still a human being at the end of the day positive impact on the world and at the same time take note of the benefits you get from it as an individual damn so when i do this people react like this bet i'm comfortable here another reason people ride kendrick's nuts so hard is because they recognize this is the lesser of two evils drake is not the victim let's not it's so crazy how y'all do this bro because somebody defend kendrick against people who tries to find criticism on everything he does people are riding his nuts it's like how's that you are saying certain things and you're wrong about the things you're saying how am i riding his nuts because i'm correcting you or giving you a difference of an opinion it's the same thing i gotta say about you if you're doing something you i could say you well you're egotistical because you're basically saying things that you we don't know if it's true or not like i i I don't understand. I don't understand your arguments sometimes. I don't understand a lot of your arguments. You do this. This is the same thing, the same exact thing that uh, uh, What's the Dirt did with Kendrick. And not to say you're like What's the Dirt, because I, I actually like this guy. I like, I mean, What's the Dirt was cool until he started doing some shit. You know what I'm saying? But him, I actually like this guy. But I definitely think that for you to say that people, it's disrespectful for you to say that people are, are, are uh, hugging Kendrick's nuts because we defend him against things that people like you say against him. How is that? I'm not saying that Kendrick can't be wrong, but I am saying that you could be overblowing it. Push that narrative now. Let's not forget the amount of shameless fucking propaganda he was and still is pushing to this day. Like, bro, every time I see an academics TV post, it genuinely makes me want to kill myself. I'm not even joking, bro. It's painful to look at. Nobody is perfect here, but Drake doesn't even try. I can't stress this enough. We know he doesn't believe in anything, right? With him, it's not even a question. He doesn't even try to pretend. So forgive me for letting the moral ambiguity slide on Kendrick's end. With all of that in mind, I mean, does it even matter, all of this, if the end result is the same? Who cares if your intentions were truthful, right? If the result is a net positive, the ends justify the means, right? No, no. Let's not go there. Because your intentions are the only thing that can consistently yield you positive results, okay? Everything else is unsustainable and a stroke of luck at best. After some time, and this always happens, the truth of one's intentions reveals itself through their actions, the results of those actions, and the manner in which they react to those results. But me personally, I trust that Kendrick's intentions are pure. And I think you should too. Why? Well, I say that there's a big chance that this man has the power to make hip hop wake up and flourish into something we've never seen before. <sighs> duply, duply, duply. Love your channel, man. Certain things I disagree with you on that one, but love your channel. Um, Yeah, man. I definitely think that a lot of people read into more into Kendrick Lamar because he's such a, a deep, layered figure that people look for things and they say oh you you contradicted yourself right here bro you said this but then you said this Th five years ago you said this and it's like people change their mind things happen like i don't i don't understand how y'all just like and not to sit here saying that everything kendrick lamar says i agree with but don't agree with everything and then a lot of y'all I think a lot of y'all, like even with GNX, this album is, isn't as deep as uh, the other albums he ever did. I wouldn't say it's not shallow either, but it's just not as deep. But a lot of y'all don't understand that y'all been asking for Kendrick to not be deep. We don't want this. We want an album that we can rock to. And he puts out an album where everybody can rock to it. Everybody's just like, yeah, this is it. And now y'all have a problem with that. Y'all want him to go back to being deep again. So one girl on, on the spaces was talking about it. 
He was saying, "Oh, ain't no hits on here. Ain't no slaps. On here. It's it's a, it's all mid. This is a mid pack." And it's like, and again, they asked, they asked him, well, "What songs do you like?" And she said, "I only like I don't like two songs on there." He said, "Well, wait, what would you like on all the for the for the dogs?" Oh, wow. Uh, I like that. I love that album. It's it's only two songs on there that I really like though. All the other songs, they are all right. So how you gonna call this album mid, and you don't like two songs, but on for all the dogs, you only like two songs, and you think it's a good album. It's crazy. But either way, man, thank y'all for watching, man. I'll be back in the morning. Make sure y'all um leave a comment and put your cash app at the end of the comment or before the comment. Actually, before the comment. And um, yeah, man. And I'll get back with y'all, man. Whoever got the best comment on any any of these videos, I'm going to be reading. Uh, yeah. And um, what's the name? I don't know what's up with this thing here, man. It's, it's acting crazy. Sorry. All right. See y'all.